Tonight on KBR News Price Hike, why UT commuters will have to dig deeper into their wallets. And how many are honoring the memory of a UT student. You're watching KBR News, Austin's leader for live, local UT coverage. Broadcasting live from the Texas Student Television Studios at the University of Texas, you're watching KBR News at 9, Austin's leader for live, local UT coverage. Your news starts right now. Good evening and welcome to KBR News from Monday, February 9th. I'm Luke Manadini. And I'm Leslie Adami. Thanks for joining us tonight. Tonight, a growing controversy within the UT community. Texas Fiji hosted a party that guests are saying was Border Patrol themed. The annual Fiji Marshals party was said to have a Western theme focusing on the traditional Old West. Instead, guests were said to be wearing ponchos, construction attire with helmets labeled Jefe or Pablo Sanchez, and traditional Mexican attire. Party decorations included a giant Mexican flag with, mu uh, flag with Texas painted in the middle. Fraternity President Andrew Campbell said that it is never the intention or goal of any of the members of Texas Fiji or invited guests to portray, to portray any racial or ethnic groups in a negative manner. He said that it was communicated that this was an Old West party and not a south of the border theme. He apologized on Texas Fiji's behalf. There are also rumors circulating that a girl attending the party was hit and knocked out at the party, but no confirmation on the incident just yet. Chancellor McRaven expressed support Thursday for in-state tuition for undocumented students in a live interview with the Texas Tribune's Evan Smith. McRaven said it wouldn't make sense for the, student, for the state to help those students get through high school and not help them in college and called supporting them morally right. McRaven also expressed support for continued tuition deregulation, saying UT system faculty are likely not paid enough and said he sees importance in the U.S. news and world report rankings that UT has slowly been dropping in. He said ideas that put us on an entirely different vector are what are going to make UT schools rise up within the rankings. UT student government T Delta Chi fraternity, Alpha Delta Pi sorority, and several other campus organizations are working to honor the memory of Lizzie Abrams, a UT junior killed in a car accident September 18th. The organizations are helping, uh, helping to raise money for a scholarship fund, establish an honor of Lizzie. Family, friends, and the university community will remember her tomorrow on what would be her 21st birthday with a 10 a.m. ceremony at the UT Tower. Lizzie was a business junior from Plano and excelled at academics and swimming. In her honor, the scholarship will benefit swimmers from Plano area high schools with high academic achievements. Um, I think the Lizzie overall scholarship was a great idea. Uh, she was one of those type of people that was always more giving to other people. Put, she thought more about other people than she ever did herself a lot of times. Um, so I think this scholarship kind of in itself is just an essence of who she is. Lizzie's father, Glenn Abrams, said he's very thankful for all the efforts to honor Lizzie. I really think that what's most important here is Lizzie's legacy. You know, she was a very bright, very articulate person who really cared about others, other people, and she was an inspirational leader in many ways. She was always looking for a way to take something that was mediocre and make it better or take something that was bad and make it good. Sexual assault on college campuses is a problem that many universities are working to tackle. UT was one of 28 different universities selected to participate in a survey about sexual abuse. President Obama took the opportunity to speak out on sexual assault on college campuses last night during the Grammys. The public service announcement was a continuation of the White House's It's On Us campaign, which focuses on ways to prevent the problem. Obama asked artists to encourage their fans to stand against sexual assault and to become assertive in the fight against it. The campaign comes shortly after the administration began using Title IX to push in institutions to take a second look at their policies regarding sexual harassment and assault. Tonight, for those that commute to UT, the price of parking permits will go up starting September 1st. Under the new plan, commuter student and service staff, will per staff permits will go up in an average $6 a year. Garage permits will increase $23 a year, while faculty will see a $10 to $30 increase, and administrative passes will jump up $64. The increases will apply over the next five years. 
Texas Student Media is expected to profit this quarter after several years of financial difficulties. This news comes more than a year after TSM moved under the, pr the purview of the Moody College of Communication. TSM manages five student media entities, the Daily Texan, Texas Student Television, the Cactus Yearbook, KVRX Radio, and the Texas Travesty. TSM Director Gerald Johnson said a in a Friday board meeting that TSM will receive up to $250,000 annually from the university and the Moody College will be paying its utility bills, which total roughly $70,000 per year. Moody College Dean Roderick Hart also earmarked a $1 million endowment for TSM from a $50 million gift to the college that TSM will be able to grow and make interest off. The campus climate response team saw an increase of 713 percent in the number of bias incidents reported for the 2013-2014 school year compared to the year before. This is partially due to the Young Conservatives of Texas events. CCRT received 670 reports last school year compared to only 94 in the previous year. 89% of the incidents filed were for the YCT's affirmative action bake sale and the Catch an Illegal Immigrant event. Still to come, how some are hitting the books. And the most puppy-loving city in the USA. You're watching KVR News. You're watching KVR News at 9. Your campus, your news. South by Southwest is now losing some of its sponsors. Brand names such as Chevy, Doritos, and Subway are stepping away from the music festival. According to KVU, Chevy represent representatives stated that releasing themselves from the festival was a hard decision, but money issues concluded their choice in doing so. Although South by Southwest is losing a few worldwide known sponsors, they are going to have an equal amount as last year's after picking up more brands along the way. Four Austin startups have been selected to compete in the 1776 Challenge Cup in Washington, D.C. Pin Pal Schools, Lucello Technology, Keat Software, and Storm Pins will all head to the nation's capital in May for a chance to win $650,000 and professional coaching. The startup's focuses range from education, energy, and sustainability, health, and transportation. The Challenge Festival will feature 64 different startups from 16 different states. Every year, every year book, Spring encourages kids in Austin to read by hosting a two-week-long readathon to raise money and promote literacy. Our Avery Travis shows us just how much was read and raised. The past two weeks, children in elementary schools, junior highs, and even high schools across Austin read as much as they could for Book Spring's annual readathon. Students got pledges from friends and family to sponsor them for every minute, page, or book read. The money raised helps Book Spring donate books to low-income schools in our area. We provide the services with Reach Out and Read to all the pediatrics clinics, and reading is fundamental to all of the elementary schools and pre-K. Um, and so all of the money that we are able to raise helps us run those programs. Many people will donate just one penny per page read by a child during the two weeks of the readathon. At this rate, two or three dollars per book read during the readathon will be donated back to Bookspring. According to the organizers at Bookspring, it only takes three dollars to donate to a child in need. Students and teachers at Goritsky Middle School and Breaker Woods Elementary said that the readathon made them appreciate reading and gave them an opportunity to give back to their community. Okay, there you go. Enjoy it. So much of my life is reading that like some people may not get that as much as I do and so then they have a chance to be able to do that. It can take you to another world. It can make you think a lot deeper than you usually do. So many people who, who don't have the luxuries yeah. and the privileges that they do and, and the fact that they can help others by reading, it seems like a no-brainer. Well, of course we're going to do this. How could we not support this program? Last year, a total of $118,000 were raised during the readathon by 23 participating schools. This year, with over 30 schools involved, Bookspring hopes to raise the amount of donations to almost double last year. This next week, they'll begin totaling up the number of donations and should know by the end of the month how much money the readathon raised. I'm Avery Travis, KVR News. Last Friday, Harvard officially joins universities such as Yale and the University of Connecticut on banning romantic relationships between undergraduate students and their professors. 
with the Yale spark in the movement in 2010, UConn followed closely behind in 2013. Arizona State University recently voted on the ban in January. Graduate students are also a part of the ban. Uh, faculties cannot have relationships with students so long as the students are under their supervision. In Updated in 2001, current UT policy strongly discourages consensual relationships between pro professors and students. It remains unclear if more universities will take action and change their policy regarding the issue. The Harvard ban comes just a week before Valentine's Day. The Hallmark holiday is trademarked with roses, candy hearts, and of course chocolate. But according to the Huffington Post, the high demand for the delicacy might result in a shortage of chocolate this holiday. The cocoa bean, which is used to make chocolate, has fallen victim to diseases that are sweeping through Latin America, killing many plants. If this continues, a global chocolate shortage is predicted by 2020. Well, I better get my chocolate. February chills didn't stop Austinites from participating in a run to help the Children's Tumor Foundation. Our Luana Solis went out to catch the action. Undie run. So we got involved with the organization because we both have a personal connection to neurofibromatosis, and so we wanted to bring this event to Austin to help you know raise funds for research. You know, I just love seeing the energy that it brings, and you know the connections that I met for doing this event. We've met so many families who are personally impacted by neurofibromatosis. This mile and a half run helps raise money and bring awareness for the Children's Tumor Foundation. Austin's Undie Run raced over $61,000 for the cost. You know, it's a really fun event, but this is a serious condition that not many people know about. And so the more that we're out here building awareness and fundraising, you know, we're one day going to have a cure. This is the third year that the race has taken place in Austin, and every year the outfits get more creative. We were sitting here one day thinking about what could we be, and then I noticed that nobody was a luchador. Mm -hmm. So we did that, and we were a big hit last year, and we did it again this year, and we're even thinking about doing a theme where we're going to next year, we're going to sign up as a team. After some fun activities, all the runners gathered up on the starting line to begin the undie run. Everyone else being in their underwear. <laughs> well, the race was definitely a success for these Cupid undie runners, but the fun doesn't stop here. Loana Solis, KVR News. <laughs> well, the UT Lego guy has done it again. Drew Finkel, UT alumni and Austinite, has built a miniature model of the Daryl K. Royal Stadium completely out of Legos. The MIDI model is made of just over 50,000 Lego pieces and even includes a real working Jumbotron Finkel made out of a Kindle Fire. Drew Finkel made a name for himself in 2013 when he constructed a three and a half foot model of the UT Tower in his Chicago apartment. Drew's hobby has since gone viral. Although the miniature tower is stuck in Chicago, Lego DKR can be seen inside the events and reservations office within the SAC. Well, just in time for Valentine's Day, Texas is ranked seventh on a list of the most puppy-loving states in the U.S. Milkbone, a popular dog snack company, surveyed 3,000 dog and dogs and their owners across the country to determine how often the two engage in lovable behaviors, such as puppy kisses and frequent cuddling. California came in at first on the list, with New York being ranked second. The weather was great this past weekend for going out to the dog parks and getting all the sun. But it's crazy to think last year we were not in school because it was canceled. Absolutely. I think by around this time last year we had already been shut down like twice and this weekend's weather has been was beautiful. This week so far is looking to be beautiful. Mm -hmm. So our Avery Travis is in the Weather Center with the rest of this week's uh, forecast. Thanks guys. Sunny, sunny skies are in our forecast with nice spring weather ahead. I'll have more on this warming frame after the break. Have a news tip or story idea? Call the KBR News Tip Line 475 8181. Welcome back to KBR News. 
It's going to be warm the next few days with highs in the 70s, cooling off into the 60s around the end of the week with some fog and cloud coverage later on. This afternoon, we had a high of 78 degrees, and overnight tonight, the temperature could drop as low as 48 degrees. Tomorrow, we're looking at a sunny high of 79 with a low of 50, but tomorrow night, we'll see some fog that could linger into the early morning hours on Wednesday, clearing up for a high of 74. Thursday will cool off a bit with a high of 58 degrees and lows in the 30s, with wind gusts kicking up to around 20 miles an hour. Maybe take advantage of those wind gusts and head out to Zilker to fly a kite. The upcoming weekend will be as sunny and warm as last weekend with clear skies, highs in the 60s, and lows in the 40s. After last week's dreary weather, you never know what's coming next here in Austin, so get out there and enjoy this sunny week while we have it. Live in the Weather Center, Avery Travis, KBR News. College Press Box's Katarina Biacardi will be in the studio to talk Longhorn Sports after the break. Stay tuned. Now, KBR News at 9 Sports. And welcome back to KBR News. I'm College Press Box's Katarina Biancardi. The Texas men's basketball team hosted the Oklahoma State Cowboys on Wednesday. The Horns are looking to break a three-game losing streak. Let's go to the Irwin Center for the highlights. The Horns are trying to break this losing streak and coming out of the tunnel hungry for a win. At the start of the second half, Oklahoma State leads 35-26. to Texas with a turnover. LeBron Nash with the dunk. Oklahoma State goes up 37-26. to Now moving on still in the second half, Oklahoma State leads 40-30. to Isaiah Taylor looks to go for a layup, and he makes it. Texas now behind 40-32. to We're still in the second half, folks. Five minutes left, and Kendall Yancey with the pass to Demarcus Hollins. And does he make the jumper? And he does. Three points for the Longhorns. Scores now 46-50. to 43 seconds left in the second half. Texas down by two. Isaiah Taylor looks to make the two-point jumper, and he does. Game is now on, is tied, and ready to rumble. Final three seconds left in the half. Texas tied 56. Isaiah Taylor up for the free throw, ready to seal the deal, but misses. Game now goes to overtime. And now Connor Lambert misses the first free throw, makes a second, but the game is now tied 63 to 63. We're at the second half. Uh, I mean, overtime, two seconds left, and Oklahoma State is up 65 to 63. Isaiah Taylor tries to make that last second shot, but just doesn't get in the hoop. Oklahoma State defeats Longhorn 65 to 63. And now we're trying to look for more wins here for the Longhorns. All right, and now we're back. And uh, College Press Box's Caden Kennard has more on the story. Doubt has clouded the Texas basketball program. Carrying a three and five record in Big 12 play, the Longhorns, a team with such high expectations, has had wildly inconsistent play. It's such a fine line with, with execution. I mean, it's such a fine line. And all five guys, you know, talk a lot about attacking space. All five guys have to be playing together. All five guys have to be fluid. And, and, uh, and when a guy goes, stops, goes back, because he's not, again, and, and I'll be honest with you, I can't explain that. The Longhorns lost against Oklahoma State. But in the second half, they were a different, much better team. Despite losing in overtime, the Longhorns came back from 14, proving to themselves that they could fix things before the season ends. But, but a, a real problem has been consistency. Like I, I told the guards after the Baylor game, I said, you know, we got to get consistent guard play. we got to get it. Texas found their consistent guard play in the second half, with a backcourt scoring 21 of the team's 32 points. Second half, they, they, they fixed it. They came out and I told them that. I said, I said to them, can it be any worse? You, you can, if you're going to hesitate, if you're, gonna, if you're not going to make the plays, we turned it over, what, 14 times anyway. So we're going to turn it over. Let's turn it over doing what we practice. Caden Kennard, College Press Box. It's really tough that our boys have been on this uh, losing streak, but they did just win the, their last game, right? They did, Lukeman, against Kansas State. That five-game losing streak was broken, and we're hoping to keep the wins coming. Okay, hopefully they can bring it home. All right, thanks, Katarina. Thank our Cortland Cole has your entertainment news tonight. What's going on in the entertainment world, Cortland? 
A recap of the 57th Annual Grammy Awards. NBC's Brian Williams goes on hiatus and Bruce Jenner involved in a fatal car crash coming up next. You're watching KBR News at 9. Your campus, your news. Welcome back to KVR News. The Grammys were held last night in Los Angeles and no one had a bigger night than Best New Artist, Sam Smith. The British recording artist took home four Grammys and thanked his ex-boyfriend for breaking his heart and inspiring his album. A very shocked Beck took home the Album of the Year award, beating out Ed Sheeran, Sam Smith, and Pharrell. While many people, including Kanye West, felt that the award should have gone to Beyonce, but the Queen Bee didn't look bothered as she and husband Jay-Z took home two Grammys themselves for their collab, Drunk in Love, and one for Beyonce's self-titled album. Other notable winners were Pharre Pharrell Williams for his album, Girl, and Best Pop Solo Performance for Happy. The shorts-wearing singer beat out Taylor Swift, Sam Smith, Sia, and John Legend to win that category. Eminem won for Best Rap Album and his song, The Monster, with Rihanna took home Best Rap Collab. Miranda Lambert rocked the ceremony with her performance and also took home the award for Best Country Album. Sir Paul McCartney teamed up with Rihanna and Kanye to perform four or five seconds. And John Legend and Common performed their Golden Globe winning song, Glory, from the movie Selma. Most notably, sang, most notably, Katy Perry sang By the Grace of God after a speech from domestic abuse survivor Brooke Axtell. Brian Williams, NBC's nightly news anchor man and managing editor, says he is temporarily stepping down from his post due to internal investigations from NBC regarding false statements Williams made. This comes after the anchor said in a broadcast last week that he was in a helicopter that was shot down back when he covered Iraq in 2003. Meanwhile, Lester Holt will be sitting in for Williams. Williams says that once he returns, he will continue his career-long effort to be worthy of the trust of those who place their trust in us. Bruce Jenner was involved in a multi-car crash last Saturday where one woman died when she swerved into oncoming traffic. According to the NBC Los Angeles report, Jenner rear-ended a woman who was driving behind a Prius. The woman's vehicle then spun into the opposite lane and was hit head-on. Information on the woman's age or who was at fault has not been released. Jenner did take a blood alcohol test at the scene of the accident, but the results have not yet been made public. That's all for entertainment news this week. For entertainment updates throughout the week, follow us at KVR News ENT. Thanks, Cortland, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Luke Menadini. And I'm Leslie Adamy. For news and weather updates throughout the week, you can follow us on Twitter at KVR News. Stay tuned for College Press Box up next on Texas Student Television. Have a great night.